The Goat House is back with my favorite picks and locks of NFL Week 9 here every Thursday with this video. Excited to share my picks with you guys. Make sure to check out our trade deadline videos, our weekly pick show, but let's get on to these picks for Week 9. My favorite picks against the spread. I got three this week, but if you want me to pick one for every game, check out that video. You guys know the drill. It's on the channel along with a lot more content, but... I like the Bills minus six. It feels like one of those ones that you you have to give it a try because the Bills always beat the Miami Dolphins. The Dolphins are trying to get back in the mix of things here after getting two back last week. They played pretty well on offense. They played the Cardinals defense. The Bills defense balling right now. And as, as good as they played last week, they still lost the game. The Bills should handle business here. James Cook should have another big game. Josh Allen should have a solid game as well. Uh, the Bills should win by, at very least, a touchdown. Definitely worth a shot just because what's been happening there with that series. But the Chargers minus one and a half I like is, as well. I think people are getting a little too hyped on the Browns. Yes, they are better at Winston, but they do have that turnover potential. They're a little fortunate the Ravens dropped that many, turn, that many interceptions, and the Ravens are struggling to stop teams in general through the air. Chargers are not. They're playing very, very, very well on defense. They'll create turnovers in this game. They will not let the Browns score many points. And the Chargers offense is getting, I know the Browns defense is pretty solid, but the Chargers offense is getting better every single week through the air. They're already pretty good on the ground, but now you have to kind of worry about them through the air as well as they're starting to add a little more. So I think they'll win that game. They match up very well. And it's only a one and a half spread. And the Patriots plus three and a half following a couple things here. I mean, the matchup against the Tennessee Titans, you know, that game could go either way. You know, it's going to be low scoring. You know, it's going to be tight. So three and a half looks like a good amount of points there for the New England Patriots. But the Titans turn the ball over. The Patriots typically take care of the football and they can win off those turnovers. They could also win off of special teams as their special teams is pretty decent. And the Titans is it might be the worst special teams unit I've ever seen. You see the Lions torch it last week. And there's also an odd trend that after teams play the Lions the week after, they lose, they struggle, and they're 0-5 in the last five against the spread. So the Titans played the Lions last week, so the Patriots. Uh, I don't like basing things off little things like that, but it's uh, it's nice that we have that on top of our, our, theory, our current theory of why the Patriots should cover the three and a half there. But those are my favorite picks against the spread. My straight up locks of week nine. We had a ton of fun with our weekly pick show this week. It's already up for week nine. Check it out. We make picks. I have other guys with me also making picks. But yeah, out of the last 10 straight up lock picks, we only lost one. It was the Ravens last week. Uh, this week, my favorite one is the Eagles. Home wearing those throwbacks. The Kelly Greens against the Jags. The Jags are selling right now. They're Are they throwing in the towel? And uh, they, they lost Christian Kirk for the year. Brian Thomas sounds like he'll actually play, but he's a little banged up. Gabe Davis a little banged up. He'll probably play as well. Uh, the defense is brutal through the air. A lot of predictable man coverage. The Eagles are going to dice that up. When it comes to the Eagles, you have to worry about that run game, but they're going to beat you at the pass now as well. And the defense is playing very, very well. I don't expect the Jags to come close to winning this game. Give me the Eagles. That's my favorite one. I'll actually put the Chiefs up here, which maybe is a little bold because they're due for a loss. They keep escaping. They keep winning. And the Bucs are a pretty explosive team, pretty decent team. But on Monday Night Football, this is a fantastic matchup for the Kansas City Chiefs because they haven't played this bad of a pass defense yet. The Buccaneers' pass defense is brutal. So this is an opportunity for Mahomes and the Chiefs' offense to get even more going through the air with DeAndre Hopkins. So they're even better now. You know, second week he's there. Now he knows the offense a little bit more. So this offense should have a day. Yes, the Bucks' offense is explosive, but remember, no Chris Godwin, no Mike Evans, and the Chiefs have one of the best defenses in football. The Chiefs should handle business straight up here. And give me the Saints uh, against the Panthers. They only have two wins this year. They're both in dominating fashion. One was against the Panthers, and one and that game against the Panthers was Bryce Young, and Bryce Young is starting again this week. So if it was Andy Dalton, I'd be confident with the Saints still, but wouldn't call it a lock, but because it's Bryce Young and because they are trading players, they are selling, they're holding players out. Some key players are sitting out of practice right now. Are they going to trade more players? So Saints getting healthier, Derek Carr back. They should definitely handle business here. So those are my favorite picks straight up. Eagles being my favorite one. Make sure to subscribe to Notification Zombie. Much appreciated. We got loads of NFL content here. We have trade deadline videos rolling out. Multiple already up this week. More to come leading up to that next week trade deadline. But my favorite over under picks of the week. We got two unders. Chargers and Browns. I like the under in 43. 
Chargers play very solid defense. We talked about it. The Browns scored some points last week, but the Ravens were injured, and they're then struggling in terms of pass defense. The Chargers play far better defense than the Ravens. They're going to create turnovers. Browns are going to do a whole are going to be able to do a whole lot, not not as much as people think. And the Browns defense is solid, so I think they'll slow down the Chargers honestly as well. So I don't see this game getting over 43 points. It should stay under. And then the Patriots and the Titans. This should be a boring field goal fest type of game. Try not to turn the ball over. That's going to be the focus in this game. And the reason it would go over would be if the Patriots special teams score maybe more than once. I think they have potential to score once, and it still goes under. But that's a possibility. But I like uh, under 38 uh, on that one, which should not be the greatest game. Could be close. Could be de- defensive, entertaining in a way. But, yeah, a lot of field goals, a lot of just no scoring, a lot of defense in that one. I got a teaser and I got a parlay for you guys. I wouldn't recommend doubling down and doing both as they are pretty similar. I like this teaser a lot with the plus 522 odds. And then we always post them on game day on Twitter. We hit the last two weeks on those. But the Bills dropped that down to two and a half. I think they're going to cover the six, but play it a little safe since you're pairing five things together here. The Saints, again, should be a lock to win. Drop it down to two and a half. You know, but I would pick the Saints covering the seven spread. Just wouldn't bet on it. Two and a half feels pretty good. Chargers, I have them winning the game. I have them scoring the one and a half, but you play really safe with this five le- five leg teaser plus three and a half. If they lose, they're not going to lose by more than three. Patriots plus seven and a half. Another team I have covering, but you can bump that up to seven and a half. There's there's no way someone's going to beat up on the other team in that game. So plus seven and a half. And the Eagles, if you drop it down to minus two and a half, that seems like an absolute lock against the Jags. So all that seems very, very realistic, and it's plus 522. If you want to go the parlay route, just straight wins. You don't like messing with the alternate lines. That's fine. You go Eagles. Chargers one's the risky one, but that's what gets you the odds. You go Chargers beating the Browns, Bills, Saints, and then Chiefs on Monday night football. There's a game tonight. I'll tweet out my my prop picks and everything. But if you do, you know, you want to use the Texans plus six and a half, plus seven and a half part of the teaser with that teaser up there, that's fine as well. If you don't want to wait from Thursday to Sunday on a you know combined picks there, then that's that's the reason I didn't throw that in. A lot of you watch this after Thursday, so that's why I didn't throw that in. But I do like the Texans getting some extra points here, but. Yeah, there, there's some good options. I like that teaser a lot this week. Favorite anytime touchdown picks. And again, make sure to follow the Twitter. We got extra picks always on there. But Elvin Kamara is going to score against the Panthers. He'll probably score more than once, to be honest. Kyron Williams has scored in every single game this year. He actually did not get a rushing touchdown last week, but he got a receiving touchdown. He's going to score again against the Seattle Seahawks run defense for sure. James Cook dominated the Dolphins last time. Uh, he'll score again. Uh, could possibly score on the ground through the air. Justin Jefferson's been on fire, of course, and co- going against a weaker Colts defense. He should get open, should find the end zone. Bijan, uh, you can run the ball on the Cowboys. I think you can do both, pass and run the Cowboys. And the, Fa- the Cowboys will be more focused on the Falcons' passing game, which result in Bijan having a good day and a touchdown. I like Joe Mixon tonight, Thursday night football, the best out of that entire game to score, and he's been doing really good. Some uh, best plus option. So if you want to do a single touchdown bet, maybe these are the way to go because they're pretty good, you know, valuable odds here. Brian Robinson Jr. should score against the Giants. The, you know, the Commanders obviously give him a good workload near the goal line, near the red zone in general. DeAndre Swift has really picked it up for the Bears. The Bears' best bet is running the football in that Cardinals game. DeAndre Hopkins, I actually really like to score. It's probably my favorite one here because it's a pretty good odds. Uh, on Monday Night Football against the weak Buccaneers pass defense. And if you want to go a little bit deeper, if you want to go a little bit more bold, Jordan Addison. There's been some talk that Jordan Addison's been open and he's not getting the ball enough. He's getting like three catches a game. Colts pass defense, not so great. Maybe they'll be focused on Jefferson and Hawkinson because he's coming back. Jordan Addison, maybe they try to get him going. Maybe Darnold finally sees him because he's been open. He sees Jefferson. He's not seeing Addison for some reason. So that would be an interesting pick. Just throw a couple bucks on. Not as confident as the rest of those, obviously. But more prop picks and much more on our Twitter. And now my college football pick of the week. Week 10 for college football. We're 4-1 on these on the year. If you're a subscriber on X slash Twitter, you get more picks. We did really well against the spread last week, and we hit our parlay last week. We hit three out of the last four weeks, so I'm cooking that up. For the Twitter subscribers, really enjoy that. Been really enjoying college football this year. But, uh, yeah, a little tricky to pick out my favorite, like that absolute lock. I thought last week was easy with Notre Dame. But Oregon will go with it. It is a lot of points in Michigan. You know, Michigan's got a pretty good defense. But Oregon is the best team in football right now for a reason. 
They This might be the best Oregon defense of all time right now, the best they've ever had, and they're going against a Michigan offense that is really struggling this year. They really cannot figure it out. They've switched quarterbacks back and forth between quarterbacks multiple times. The run game can get going a little bit, but I just do not trust this offense at all. I mean, how many points realistically are they going to score? I do not see them scoring seven more than 17. I'm going to predict less than that. Uh, Oregon, yeah, I know they're playing against a good defense, but this offense is heating up right now. They can win with the pass or the run. The offensive line is a night and day difference from early in the year. They'll get going the way the way they played Illinois, a similar team to Michigan. Actually, Illinois beat Michigan. Not that that really matters, but it's a similar matchup. And the way Oregon played that last week, it's like, okay, since the Ohio State game, they are rolling right now. And the way this wouldn't cover, yeah, as if Gabriel's a little off, he's had... He's either been like Heisman-like this year or very underwhelming, but lately he's been more of the Heisman-like. You know, it's since the Ohio State game, like I said. So if he turns the ball over against a good defense, and I I think they can make mistakes and they can still cover because, again, this Oregon defense is legit. It is one of the very best, you could argue, the best in the country. There's a chance Michigan scores like 7 points, 10 points. That's very realistic. So give me Oregon. It's a little scary with that hook. At 14 and a half, what if they win by two touchdowns? But I think they roll in this game. There's a cup. There's a few others I really like. There's one or two I really considered as that top pick for this video, and uh, cooking up a pretty good parlay as well that I feel good about once again. But that's for our Twitter subscribers for that, and they get more content as well. But while you're here on our channel, subscribe, check out that, that trade deadline content, more of that coming in our weekly pick show up, our power rankings up, our score predictions and picks against the spread for every single game. It's up on the channel, so join us. we much appreciated, but that is going to do it for this one. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Goodbye.